Hello class. Today I want to discuss with you Baker's Percent. For some reason this always seems to be a very difficult subject for students, but it is the introductory point where we begin talking about recipes and scaling and understanding them and distinguishing between the benefits of a recipe versus a formula versus weight, volume, and count. And now we're going to throw in ratios. You've heard of ratios, but ratios are a way to say that each ingredient are related to each other whether it's the proper way to cook pasta one gallon of water one pound of pasta quarter cup of kosher salt and that gives you this proper salt ratio and oil to vinegar water or stock to rice all of these different things are ratios just like one two three cookie dough or three two one pie dough so with baker's percent your ratios are percents based off of the total weight of flour and you know the simplest way is you only have one flour in the recipe so that's always 100 percent in this particular example today we have three flours so I'm going to cover that as well as how you find out these other answers here whether you're working left to right or backwards right to left so on our standard recipe card here you can see number of portions the name of the recipe why we have it, how many loaves, the standard portion size, and so I've added a little note here that when you have flours, you add all of them together, and that becomes your total weight of flour. This column here just breaks it down into your total ounces. We'll explain this later. 10 pounds times 16 ounces in a pound plus 8 ounces equals X amount here. Or percent or part of the flour would be determined on multiplying or dividing the weight per flour by the total weight of flour. So if you added these three together, that would be the total flour weight. And you would do that in pounds and ounces. And that would be 100%. So then these two boxes would be complete. And if you still had these open, you could figure those out. For instance, if you just had whole wheat flour and rye flour, you would add 4 pounds 12 ounces twice that would tell you how much weight that is. Also, because they're even in weight, it would still be 100%, but you'd know here if their part would be 50% and 50% equaling 100. But back to the ratios. The concept of ratios in the baker's percent is that this total amount of flour is going to require X amount of water, X amount of yeast, X amount of salt, X amount of sugar, whatever the recipe is. So in this case, again, we're looking at challah bread. So challah is basically going to be these ingredients in different proportions based on the flavor you want or somebody else's formula versus yours or a textbook or so forth. To get a bread to leaven, which is why we have yeast, you need X amount of yeast. With water, you need X amount of water or liquid to hydrate the flour that you have. And if you're making a cake, you would obviously have more liquid because you know that a cake is a batter versus a dough, like a bread, that is uh, formed by shaping as opposed to a batter being poured into a form or a mold to hold and shape it. And then the other ingredients, same reasons. Salt controls the yeast growth, sugar promotes yeast growth, and so on. You, know, you can look at answers here, which I have provided so that you can practice, look at answers, and go from there. If you don't understand what to do, then we have the how-to's, which I'm going to walk you through as well. But on this page, before we go to the how-to's, what I want you to see is what I was speaking about on the former page. Same identical setup here, same all through here, except for those boxes that were blank before are now filled. Bread flour, wheat flour, rye flour, you can see that 10 pounds times 16 ounces in a pound, so you're left with just ounces because pounds cancel, plus 8 ounces is 168 ounces. These added together should equal these, which is going to give you 20 pounds, or 20 times 16 ounces in a pound gives you total ounces. And that's what this should equal, is 320. These should equal the 20. Altogether, these three flowers equal 100%. That's the only challenging part of this entire concept is knowing that all the ingredients are based on a percentage of the amount of flour you have. 
and you can see that 10 pounds 8 ounces divided by 20 times 100 to move the decimal would give you 52.5 percent and you should recognize this for one reason you can see that bread flour is more than whole wheat and rye and then you can see because both the whole wheat and rye are the same weight they're going to have the same percentage but these three now equal this the next concept is going to come back over and over and over throughout this course depending on the problem we're doing and the material you're trying to figure out if you have your flour weights which would be your total over here now that we've figured this if I give you or a problem gives you that your yeast is 3.19 percent against the 100 you would take your total flour weight and multiply it to get your portion if we have 20 what's part of 20 pounds well we want exactly 3.19 percent of 20 pounds and that's going to come out to ounces because it's not over 16 if it was 16 or more that we we would then know we have at least a pound of yeast needed in this case it's not so our quantity would be 10.2 ounces because this is not more than a pound the numbers here are identical if it was a pound you would see here like vegetable oil one pound in the ounce column is written as 16 ounces or nine pounds is written as that many ounces you do the same process all throughout if you're going this way from this to the percent to these so 20 pounds times 0.45 or times 45 in the percent sign will give you the number times 30 and so forth but what I want you to see is some of these or these boxes here were not given only the white ones were so how do you figure it out if you don't have the percent well you have to have one of the pieces of information you'd either need to have a number from this column or this column to figure this column out so if you look at egg yolk because it's not grayed out that means that number was given to you if we look back you can see it was already there you now would take six pounds and divide it by 20 to come back and give you your percent because now we're saying we have six pounds of this as a ratio and that gives us a percent so what is six pounds of 20 well six times six goes into 20 three times at 18 so we would continue through that thought process if you were given this number instead of going to the pound total weight you would use the ounces so it'd be 16 into the 320 to tell you how much percent that would be and one of the things that a manager a chef a owner operator does is they're very perceptive and they plan things out and they review things and so on if you see 16 ounces and you see we've already figured this at 10.2 you can see there's a little bit of difference between the percentages that's one easy way to see if you're on the right track but if you have 16 ounces and this had been 8 you should see the percentages are exactly half or double of them but if this one comes out to 25 percent and this one's two percent then you've done something wrong when we look at the how to's this will make more sense because I know I'm just speaking at the numbers on the page the last thing I want you to recognize on this page is the total column on the very bottom row here first of all this column is the total of all the weight of your products and again formulas we always do weight and the ratio has to be based on weight as well this column is the same as this one but it's just written in total ounces as opposed to pounds and ounces and you can see this is 39 pounds 975 total percent the second most challenging thing for students to understand is that this re a recipe or a formula in regards to baker's percent is always more than 100 percent and that's because you start with 100 with your total flour weight whether it was just one flour two three or ten so if you got a hundred the rest of these percents added to it will give you your total here that's it then of course your recipe would be done if you remember in the previous lecture video with the PowerPoint, 
I discussed how our former instructor, when she was in college, they were asked to recreate the Krispy Kreme donut recipe. The only way they could do that is based on this ratios concept. Knowing you need X amount of flour, they had to decide what type of flour was used. They needed X amount of yeast to leaven, what type of yeast was used and how much is based on the proportion of flour. How much water, or did they use milk, egg yolk, or even how much sugar, how much goes into the glaze. These were all ratios to each other, and that's how they figured it out. Ratios are much more exacting to give you a basis. If you always know that for every five pounds of flour, you need 1% of yeast and 0.75% of salt, you could always figure out a recipe. That's the introduction. Let's look at the how-to, which again is your real first exposure to these. So how-to part one. No, it looks a little busy, but please remember, everything is color-coded. So for instance, we're looking here at total flour weight from this little spot right here, going over to this column, and you're multiplying it, and then that equals this column. And that should make sense because we're looking at ounces going into the quantity unit in ounces column. If we're going this way, you can see this column times 16 ounces per pound plus any individual ounces. So that's the 10 pounds times 16 ounces per pound plus 8 individual ounces gives you 168. The green here you're going to do the exact opposite of what you just did right here, and it's got a little call out here. There's 16 ounces per pound, and any 0, 0.00 decimal times 16 ounces per pound for individual. So if you did that, you would see you would get exactly 10 pounds, and you'd have 8 ounces left over, which gives you that answer. And that's the same process all the way down. These with the red arrows, and I know it's a little hard to decipher, but if you take the red arrow here and follow it, the red arrow here and follow it, the red arrow here, you can see that those are selling you those together will equal this. So essentially you're adding these three together because there's three flowers. If there was two, there'd only be two numbers to add. If there was one flower, the work is already done for you. The yellow, which is a little bit hard to see as well, it's the same idea as the red, but now we're looking at weight uh, uh, in total pounds. So we're going to the, this column, and here's the yellow. This plus this plus this equals that. Finally, if you have your percentages, you take your total weight times the percentage times percentage equals the column that ends over here. If you notice, there's a little thicker line right here trying to, again, throw out or call out that the flowers are the the staple or the standing point from this entire recipe. The circle here in green goes with this green here and that's this plus this plus this equals the number here which was 100 and that's because your flower weights are 100 percent. So if you have a 52.5, a 23.75, and a 2375, that equals 100. If it doesn't equal 100, something happened and you've got to figure out what you did because all of these numbers are based on having this portion correct before you go any further. So hopefully that gave you a little breakdown and now we're going to go to part two. And remember with these how-tos, however complicated they may seem to you, what you're seeing is exactly what you have to do for the recipe. So if you know how to do it, this is what you're doing. If you don't know how to do it, this is telling you the steps that you need to take to do this or to complete it successfully. So part two. So same recipe, I've blown it up nice and large for you. This just shows you that if you take your ounce flour weight, that's assuming you've filled all these out because you should do this part first before you ever go down here or below that thick line. So this number divided by this is equaling this times 100. Then the times 100 is to turn a decimal into a percent. If you know how to move your decimal to the left or right two places based on what you're doing, then you don't need to multiply by 100. So we've got our 10.2 going into this, dividing it, equals the 3.9. So 10.2 ounces 
divided by the 320 ounces so the units cancel, so you're not left with a unit you gotta carry. Arrow equals, it probably said 0 .03, 0 0.19, but we multiplied it by 100 to get 19%. We do that over and over for everything in the column. So what do you think part three is? If we're going backwards, so we have this number, we have this number, but we need to find this. So what's the opposite of division? If you said multiplication, you're on the right track. So we're going to the same number again here, times or multiplying by our percent to equal our ounces. This times your percent equals the number of ounces. And then again, if you have more than 16, when you come to this column, it'll be either pounds or pounds and ounces, depending on how it divides out, like this one here. We were a half ounce short of a pound, but we don't round up because that changes our formula or our baker's percent and the ratio. Final screenshot is what I also explained on the second page over here, how to uh, part one coming from our answers page, is that everything in one column gets added together to give you your total weight for the formula. These added together equals this. These two should be equal. If it doesn't come out to an even poundage, you're going to have ounces listed as well. So once you've added these together and you get this, you can see that you could also take this total, if you don't have this one, take this and divide it by 16 ounces per pound to give you your total weight in pounds or pounds and ounces. If you did the reverse, which means I have this number, I don't have this total, I can multiply this out like I showed you on part two. This column times 16 ounces per pound plus the individual ounces gives you this total here. Now you should always add these up and then do your math that you check, which would be, does this equal the same as this? Because they should, and if not, something's wrong. This column is gonna be 100% for your flour, plus all your individual ingredients percentages added together. So you can see this formula is 198.4%. And that's because we started with 100. These items here are 98.4. So our recipe is that much. You could have a 300% recipe. What that means is the total of the ingredients outside of the flour are more than 100, or the amount that the flour is, which is okay just means you need to have more liquid or more other ingredients that equal more than the total weight of the flour. Hope that makes sense. Additional practice, you can see there's a problem here. And I did these a little more simple so you can learn technique. So here there's only one flour and you have all the starting weights. These added together give you total weight. This column is this broken into just ounces, so 1, 6, 12, 16, 32, 2, and 160 would be in this column. These two should equal again. Baker's percent, since there's one flower, what should go there? If you said 100%, you're correct. So what is our weight for total flour? Well, it would be 10 pounds. What's that converted into ounces? If we filled this out, we already know. If not, it's 10 pounds times 16 ounces per pound, and that gives us 160 then everything else is based on that. In two, I've taken this away and given you this column, so you're gonna go back this way by dividing by 16 to get your total weight. You might have whole numbers. You might have a whole number and a total number of ounces. Your percentages, again, it's one flower, so it's by 100 or is 100%. If you scroll down and see the next problem, now I've given you total weight and flour Again, just one of them. All the percentages as ratios against the 100%, and that'll give you the ability to answer these questions. In step four, now we've added a second flower, but if you can see one is 50%, then you know the other's gotta be 50 to equal 100%. This one is a mix, a couple of these, a couple of these, a couple of these, so you're getting practice from this one, this one, and this one. In number five, just added a third flower and you can fill this out. 
and if this isn't making sense we do have the answers you can see here additional answers all ready for you or you could go back and look at the particular how to's based on the part that you're having trouble with so i hope this helps